the budget, but we'll certainly ask the school committee if there's if there's reports this evening. Report. Just a reminder. Absolutely, about the let's, have Luther nope. King let's have it. No, let's have it. Celebration. We have Kristen Killian here tonight, and her singers, RMH the singers, are going to be singing along with other community groups. Starts at 9.30 for breakfast, um, and 10 o'clock is the presentation. After Monday, I won't say that anymore. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Dr. Dory, Dr. Doherty, having trouble talking. Do you have a, a report this evening? I do not. This is easy, I tell you. <laughs> Shall we get started? Yeah. Let's get started. Okay. So we're going to use a similar format uh, to what we did the other evening. Um, I'll begin by giving an introduction to the talk center, and then I'll turn it over to uh, Martha. We also have here our directors <coughs> um, and, other, and other department heads tonight that are, that are really, this is their, the cost centers that they focus on. So um, Ms. Dunn, uh, director of nurses, uh, Lou Caputo is our network manager. I don't know if you've, if you've met Lou before, but he's our network manager. Um, Mr. Zay, you know, is our assistant principal for athletic and extracurricular activities. Your Kristen Killian is the fine arts department chair at the, at the high school. Um, so they are here. Oh, I've got Kelly. I'm sorry. I'm Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> and Kelly uh, Cologne, who's our director of facilities. Um, so you'll be hearing. Uh, about their budgets this evening um, as we move forward. So we're gonna we're gonna start first with the district wide um, programs. And you know, remember again that district wide programs refer to any function that you cannot allocate to either regular education or special education. So in our cases, it's all the health services um, that are not special education related, uh, athletics and extracurricular activities, which are primarily at the high school and our networking and technology maintenance. This does not include, in the network and technology maintenance, this does not include instructional technology. This includes any funding that is needed to run our network, our servers, our staffing that focuses on our network. Um, so that, that's what goes into that area. Anything dealing with instructional technologies in regular day. So again, connecting it back to our goals. Um, and the five goals at the top and the different initiatives. This cost center does touch upon many of our um, different goals that we have in, in initiatives that we have in our district. So they play a real critical role in the overall uh, behavioral health of our students um, in terms of making sure that our, our facilities are uh, maintained and clean um, and that we have adequate learning space. Um, and that our technology is working and is integrated seamlessly throughout our, um, throughout our classroom. So there's a lot of connectedness here from this cost center into, into our goals and initiatives. So the big cost center budget drivers for this budget um, are your increases uh, for collective bargaining increases for your salaries, uh, for coaches and advisor stipends, um, for our nurses, technicians, and any substitute, we have substitute nurses also in this cost center. The offsets, as we're gonna talk about in a little bit more detail later on, we are proposing an increase in the extracurricular and athletic offsets from a proposed increase in user fees for our high school athletics and drama. If you take a look at the cost center in terms of percentage uh, financially, um, our largest cost center is our health services and that really is because um, of the, the number of nurses that we have on staff. Um, uh, and so it's the, the salaries of, of those nurses and, and our director. Our next largest portion of this cost center is athletics, uh, which is primarily your coaches, um, transportation, rentals. Um, those are your big, big drivers. And then this district technology, again, driven by the number of technicians and our network manager that are in that budget and our smallest um, but not insignificant is our extracurricular um, portion of that this cost center. So I'm going to now turn it over to Martha. She's going to she's going to go into the numbers in more detail. Thank you. So as John just meant, these, uh, mentioned, these four cost centers make up the district-wide programs. Um, health services. Uh, 
the increase of 8.3% is with mostly contractual obligations with the Winters' uh, bargaining unit. Athletics, although it looks like athletics is declining by 5%, it's actually not. If you add back the increase in offset, the 50,000 back in the offset, that number would be 511,000, not 461, and it's actually a 5% increase. Um, same thing with extracurricular. If you add back the increase in $10,000, um, it's actually a 3.8% increase. So it, while it appears that it's decreasing, it's decreasing because we've increased our offsets. <coughs> um, technology. Uh, there's a couple of factors going on in the technology budget. One is the, um, the, the uh, 1.0 FTD from the school transformation grants is in there, but that's also offset by the 0.25 that we're charging uh, back to the data. The So in the is that the technician position? It's technician. Yeah, technician. That's coming out of a grant, did you say? We're no, it's, we're restructuring savings. Um, so we've moved some things that were in our budget <coughs> to the school transformation grant, resulting in savings, which we're now applying to add a technician. So it's a restructuring of existing funds. Um, again, this is just another, uh, another way to, to look at the data by by uh, program object group. If you look at our FTE count, um, you're really not going to see any changes year over year. We still have the, the same 9.3 in our health services, which is our, our eight building-based nurses and our director, which we uh, allocate part district-wide administrator, part nurse, um, for your high school. Um, Athletics is still the same. Uh, the, really, the only change on this table is right down here with the computer technician, where we had taken 0.25 and put it on a grant, and, and the 1.0 that I just mentioned that we're adding back. We're proposing the increase. So, one more question or comment. Just, I mentioned this before, but so planting, I'm not, I'm not in danger of doing this. We are not. No. Um, so the first one I'll walk you through is the health service budget. Um, really the drivers in this one is the increase in, sa uh, increase in salary is from the collective bargaining agreement. Um, and as you look at this, you can see uh, we've pretty much level funded everything with the budget in FY16, with the exception of the, um, the, the salary lines. Um, we do have... Uh, Mr. Robinson, uh, just I just want to so this the collective bargaining salary increase was three percent, uh, and we're so we had that many steps and columns to get to nine percent. Um, on the nurses, we did have we do have people who are moving steps and columns. We have a nurse that has a master's degree, and yeah. I know with this contract, and with a master's degree was. We made that change. Um, we do have a school physician on staff, um, not on staff, but uh, comes in and, and helps with physicals and uh, other things. Do you have to think what else he does for us? We support for me. Um, we communicate frequently during the school year. If I have questions, and um, he does come out when we need them. The athletic budget. Uh, really, the, the budget drivers here, again, are the coaches and clerical staff salaries, um, game staff for uh, supervision purposes. There's a deep, you'll, when you look at the numbers, when they have them up a year over year trend, it looks like there's a decrease in transportation, but actually it's one of the budget lines that during this process we realized it was a little bit overfunded. So although it looks like a decrease, it's, it's really, um, it's, it's not anything to be concerned about. And then we did uh, budget an increase in the revolving fund offset of $20,000. Uh, so with the $50,000, the user fee increase that we're proposing, 
is to go from $215 to $250. So it's about a 16% increase for the dollars We're proposing to change the cap from um, 500 to 600 and the family cap to go from um, 800 to 950 And as you know, the user fees cover almost, almost all of the coaches' salaries and, um, and almost 45% of the Dr. Doxy. I'm wondering with these increases, the families are going to be paying these increases. Are there also going to be increases in the fees to participate, like when they go to watch their children at a basketball game or at a football game? Are those ticket prices also going to be going up? I'm just worried about hitting people every which way. The ticket prices are usually determined by the league, right? Yeah, the they're determined by the league for the last. I think probably six or seven years they've been uh, they've been steady. I would there has been some talk with athletic directors and principals about going up by a dollar for for a ticket. That has not been going on very too. Uh, uh, Mr. Robinson. I was just going to follow. I'm sorry. I was just going to follow up asking whether the um, whether the directors have gotten feedback from their parents about the user fee change. Is this an appropriate time to ask of that? Of the user fee change or the ticket prices? Either. I mean, they, well, they wouldn't fees. have missed for, for user year, fees yeah, because I just brought up the ticket and right. that's not a matter right. of discussion. We've not, we not had conversations with parents about that. About the athletic? About the user fees. Well, I didn't know if people have been reading the budget documents. Oh, no, public. we've not received any, any feedback on that. No, we've not. And the directors haven't either. Thank you. Mr. Robinson. <laughs> One of the things that I've been wondering is, uh, and you know, maybe Tom Boy, and I don't think we can resolve it tonight, but have we considered, uh, we charge students to go to games, and I, that, that bothers me a little bit. Uh, I can see adults, and, uh, but, you know, do we have any sense, probably not, as to, you know, if we didn't do that, would that really would we take a big hit uh, financially? Uh, I mean, I think we should be letting students into the events for free. Uh, I think that's something we're going to have to take a I'm look at. I'm going to have to look at it. We do yeah. segregate the revenue, the, the ticket revenue in, in years. So it, it is something that I can identify. Um, and I do think that when we do the deposits, we probably have some data that we can go back and see what percentage of the revenue was student-driven versus so I certainly can try and look for that data. This is good. So just to follow up on that, if it's if it's MIAA driven, then yeah, that we can't. It's not. But if it's an MIA tournament, we that's can. only for oh, sorry. Okay, not the regular. I'm talking about the regular. Regular season games. Half dozen or oh, five or okay. six oh, okay. games we have for I football, know. right? Okay. Yeah. And yeah, basketball. we could we could uh, as a Hockey. league we can go less than what the league is suggesting. I think that we. Is a league agreement. We will not go more than what what we decide. For the game entry fee. Correct. MIA, yes. So for MIA events, the MIA does set that. For our local events, it's a league driven cost. And if I, if I might add to that, um, um, we had made the well, we had made it more public over the last few years. But Reading uh, school employees are admitted to games for free. I think it's an excellent suggestion from Mr. Robinson, but I, I wanted to make sure that any any Reading uh, school employee is more than welcome to attend. Our home, our home, our, our home, home. Yes, our home. yes, yes. Doctor Doxer. So that begs the question to me: if there are league games and that we have no control over what's charged, and I assume that money goes elsewhere, but we have, if we so. If a league has a game here, then we collect the revenues from that for the We tickets. have a Middlesex League game, so if Reading is playing Stone in an event, the money stays here with us, with the exception of Thanksgiving, for football. Oh. What I was going to ask was, um, do we have an option if they're, the opposite teams obviously are coming as well, so can it be a Reading Student gets in for free, but the others are charged. Present their we could, ID. Yeah, we could absolutely have Reading students present their ID to get admission to events for free. We could Even certainly if we're discuss the other. that. Yeah, we could. Yeah, that may need some discussion. 
Yes, I, I have not investigated that. I do know that some places do charge and some don't charge, but that's for everybody. So I don't know if, if it's just a home, a home crowd or away, that may be something to look at. Thank you. If I could ask one more follow-up question, it's, it's in that same line. Seniors, Mr. Zapp, do we charge senior citizens? For admission into games? Uh, generally, uh, senior citizens will get in at the student rate. Okay. We do offer passes if, if senior citizens do come to us. We do offer a senior pass for our home events. <coughs> Further questions? Mr. Knight? Mr. Knight? Um, we don't really have any way of differentiating Reading students from you know, opposing team students to determine the revenue that would be taking in, right? It would just be one month. Yeah, yeah, yeah so we, yeah. we wouldn't know them. Right. Mr. Robinson. Clearly why I brought it up is not a real, I don't think it's going to be any type of financial, it's just more of, uh, you know, getting the kids more engaged and knowing that, you know, it's, it's a free community event. Uh, it's, I mean, I'm sure the dollar amount is not significant either way. Yeah, we, we don't know. We'll have to, yeah, we'll have to let it go. One comment to think of later when we start talking about the other student fees and gate charges, but the same might be said for some of the amazing theatrical performances we put on. Tickets can be sometimes prohibitive, and I'm sure we'd like to do something about that. I hope I'm saying that properly, but um, it, it would be nice to be able to yeah, promote we, we student attendance. That, no, that, again, yeah. That may be more problematic, sure, because sure. I know it's a, ticket sales make up a significant amount of <coughs> revenue. Try it. Okay, thank you. More questions in that line? Thank you. So, um, this goes back to the presentation that I gave the school committee um, in, in December to talk about comparing our, our user fees to some of the Middlesex three teams. So there are 12 teams in our conference. Three teams, three districts don't charge fees at all. It's Woburn, Wilmington, Wilmington and Burlington, thank you. And as you know, those three have a very different tax base than, than Reading does. Um, our current $215 per sport with the $500 and $800 uh, caps is, is, was low on the comparative. Um, many schools are charging more than $300, and these are sliding scale for sports. One of the questions that I think could come up out of that presentation, um, the ice time, uh, we spend about $37,000 annually on ice time. And the swimming is about $28,000 to rent the pool. Um, compare. Dr. Sorry, I, it just struck me that there are other opportunities for revenue at these games when food is served, but would that only be the, um, the support, the parent, and I forget what they're called, the but the boosters, the thank boosters you, the boosters group. So that wouldn't be a way to recoup some, uh, to allow people to go in free, but to recoup through food sales. Or well, then you'd be taking away from the boosters who donate right. funds to No, that's right. Yeah. That's what I was asking. Yeah. It was just that. Come in for free, Thank but it's you. a $12 Coke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Europe. Yeah. yeah. Um, so in our subgroup, Reading was the only district that had um, both an individual and a family cap. Um, most districts just had a family cap. Um, caps ranged from $500 in Mansfield to $1,500 in Milton, and Reading's price point, again, on the two, uh, $215 per sport was, was low compared to um, both groups. Uh, so this is the, the grid that um, outlines our fee structure, and it actually has all of our fees on it. Um, as you can see, we haven't raised our fees in the last four years. Uh, the last time we raised the athletic fee was back in FY. 2012. Um, the proposed increase to go from 215 to 250 is about a 16 percent increase. <coughs> During that period of time, we have had contracted stipend increases, um, and so this 16 percent increase really kind of uh, catches up for the years of no increase. Um, I'll, I'll talk about drama, the drama fees, when we get to extracurricular. If that's all right. Can you just um, see what page that? Uh, I don't know that the proposed fee is in the budget. No, this is this, this in the budget. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That this no, this was in a PowerPoint that you saw in November. On okay. Yeah. And, um, and I apologize, I should have asked this question earlier, and, and maybe someone didn't, and if you don't have the breakdown, that's fine. Um, 
Do we know if we had raised the proposed fee to 250 but left the caps as where they currently are? Do you have any idea of what a decrease in potential money that would be? I'd have to go back okay. and the numbers. I, okay. I don't think I, I, I should have. I, no, that's fine. I, I may ask that question, but yeah. okay, thank you. Um, so, broadly, we just wanted to point out participation. As you can see in FY14-15, there are some blanks, those are spring sports that haven't happened yet. Um, and I do have another table that will compare um, you know, fall and winter um, throughout the years. But as you can see, our, our participation levels have been pretty consistent. Um, even the year that we did raise user fees, we did see a slight decline in participation from 1,298 to 1,282. Um, but our, our participation rates have been pretty consistent despite these of these. The one sport that I will point out, because it'll, it'll become more obvious in the, the next graph, uh, the next chart, we, we have seen a decline in, uh, in indoor um, track, as you can see, and, and in this grid, it, it, you can see it. Uh, that, that's, uh, we were at 862, we're at 848, but through the, through the first two sports seasons, we're at 783. And we're not sure um, if that's just a uh, girls aren't interested in running in the winter anymore, or if there are studies that are requiring them to uh, to forego sports. If I could make oh, Mrs. Perry, you go. This is not a FinCom comment, but the, the ex track yeah. participant parent. I think we start to get to the point where we have to perhaps look at tiered pricing because I do look at a sport like track and where a lot of kids are participating but not necessarily running in the varsity meets and you want to encourage it. I think it's critical and definitely parents are going to start going, really, I'm paying for you to just hang out with your friends every day? Believe Did people start making those financial decisions for a, for a sport that really doesn't cost the school much? I, I think it's a real loss. So I, you... You didn't steal my thunder. You said the same exact thing. I, I think that those types of activities where, you know, I, no, I haven't been skating since I was four years old, so that's not really an option for me at the high school level. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, track certainly is, and I actually, the, the wrestling has declined as well. That's another sport where some kids might, might say to themselves, hey, I'd like to do something. I've never tried. I want to try wrestling. At $250, it does become a, is it, is it worth it? Are you really going to stick with it? Because I can't pay 250 to have you quit or, 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 or not participate. So I agree with that sentiment exactly, 100%. Dr. Doxer? Having been a track parent also, the meets also get very expensive because you're paying to go to the meets. And especially, so yeah. I, I, people I, from both sides. I keep adding to it, but especially now that we no longer have meets in Lexington, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's five bucks to park at Harvard. It's ten bucks to park if you can find a spot at half the places, and then they're all charging their own fee mm -hmm. for admission. So it, it's become expensive. I think as a league, we're, we're looking at that, and we're running our track meets at literally world cl world class facilities at Reggie Lewis, at BU, and at Harvard, and those are very expensive. So the, it may not seem like track costs a lot, but the, the rental fees for those facilities are huge. We are doing one, uh, one or two meets this year at Lexington. The only place in the league that, that even are feasible for, for meets would be Reading, Lexington, and Newport. So, and just to add to that, <coughs> I'm lucky enough that you know my daughter is running track and it's been phenomenal to go to those facilities if you can get there at five o'clock uh, you know, on a weekday. And I, and I get it, Mr. Zer, completely. Uh, so, thank you. Mr. Robson. Yeah, I, I just, Tom, to respond to that, I think that you know, maybe it's time that we, uh, the school systems, go to Reggie Lewis and say, hey, we're paying you a user fee to use this. We don't want our parents to pay to get in. It's the same discussion we had a few months ago on the MIAA dictating to us what they're gonna, what they're gonna charge here. It's not their facility. Uh, same thing with that. If they want us to use it, if enough people get together and say, you know, we're not going to be, you know, another revenue stream for your, uh, you know, your concession stands and your, you know, pro shops and whatever else they have in there. Uh, we want to run our meets here and we'll pay you 
what we should for that, but after that, you guys, you know, we're not going to pay you that. Some of the some of the facilities, it, it is exactly that. We're renting it. Yeah. We run the concession stand, meaning the league, and uh, and have a game. So there was a little bit of that. It, it varies from MIT to Harvard to Reggie Lewis as well. So, Mr. Mayor. So so I guess when we're talking about tiered. I guess I wouldn't have a problem with um, a reduced cost for, um, let's say, a sport like track. But I, I, can't, I have to say that I've been an MIA official for um, I don't know, close to 40 years. Been involved in high school sports for at least that long, anyways. And when user fees came in, there was a dip in you know um, participation. But what I've seen really probably damage participation the most is when you did go to a uh, tiered level, like saying, okay, uh, wrestling cost X amount of dollars to, um, to put, a, put a three coaches together and, and uh, uh, uniforms and, and buses and so forth and tournaments and all that. And um, you know, if you, if you do a cost analysis of it, uh, a lot of programs dropped wrestling because the kids just walked away from it. That could happen to uh, any one of these sports. Probably wouldn't see it in football or hockey basketball <coughs> is even cheerleading these days, but um, I think you would see the sports that are attractive <coughs> and like something like swimming, which is said it costs twenty eight thousand dollars to run the pool, which kills me that we have to do that. But there are you know, there's probably twenty two girls, twenty four girls. Twenty four girls, huh? There's uh, twenty nine and thirty four. Something to that that effect, you know. This is what? So I'm definitely, if we're going to look at this, this any type of tiered structure, I'd definitely like to see a lot more data on it because um, I think swimming is a sport that it falls into both categories that people have been talking about. So it has a rent, uh, maybe it has a high rental fee. I don't know whether it's really more than others when you add it all up, but it's also a sport that any that kids can pick up and do. Kids start never having swum before. And we have kids on the team this year who have not swum before and are doing great. So, you know, we don't want to, that's to the point of, you know, not want to discouraging participation in sports where kids don't have to have been in Pop Warner for 10 years before they come to high school or something, you know, and, and, and be able to be in a sport. So these are sports like that. Um, but, you know, some of them are going to have sort of lower, lower uh, cost structures and higher cost structures. And, you know, then you hate to see, Somebody who really wanted to swim, but I can't swim because it's going to be you know, just more expensive one. So I guess I'll wrestle because um, that's cheaper. Um, you know, I, I, so I need a lot more information on the on these types of structures if we're going to be really, you know, talking about tiered structures. So, uh, I might make the general comment that, and, and I guess I'm going to speak for for Mr. Croft. I won't do it as well as he could do, but our track program funds the majority, I mean, they're taking the majority of the hit. So if you look at cross country and indoor track, uh, yep, and I, I'll, I'll, uh, what's the number? Yeah, 91. That's, uh, runners supplement a lot of the overall budget. So everybody pays the same amount. And we have, a, we've had this discussion for, for 10 years now. I mean, yeah. we always have this discussion. Uh, I, I'm not for a tiered, because I think it's going to become cost prohibitive in some sports to do it that way. We also have said for years now that we use the user fee to offset coach's salary, and the coaches are all tied to the same contract. So um, it's yeah. not... The user fees are not tied to, to the materials, the supplies, the rental fees. It's not tied to that. It offsets 92, 95 Almost 95% of the coaches. 95% of the coaches. It's dropping. Yeah, so we need to be careful with that, though. I mean, I, I think right when I say that a lot of the booster parent groups also supplement the coaches' salaries as well. Other no, no, they the traditional, traditional coaches. coach salaries. Not, our car, not the coaches that are in the collective bargaining agreement. Additional coaches. So when for you instance, approve of a donation, paid, when you approve a donation, you're approving a donation for an additional coach. At a fee, at, a, at that rate. Right, the rate that you approved right. um, a few years ago. So, but what comes to us for approval, though, is the, the donation, uh, the donation the of donation. three thousand dollars for an additional lacrosse coach or soccer right. coach or and whatever. That's, right, that's, 
but the, the, is the amount the head coach, the assistant coach, the freshman right. coach are all in Yeah, the those are all in the contract. All, these yeah. are additional coaches right. Right. that these booster groups are paying for. But the, the, no, Mr. Robinson. The parents who are asking to pay the user fee are paying for those coaches too because that's who they're raising the money for from. No, I, I agree, but I mean, I think that's a greater discussion in terms of want versus need. You know, if the, if the booster group wants to have additional coaches, that's their choice. The coaches we've provided are, you know, we do provide a level of coaching in, in every sport. Some, <coughs> some groups want more coaches. That's their choice. Or the coaches want more. Or the coaches I don't think want more. They're but, the parents about right, how but, many coaches you think. But what, have. what I'm saying is, is that that's above and beyond. Knowing how important, I, I think what you're hearing from the committee, if, if I might try, is that um, extracurricular, co curricular <coughs> activities are of the utmost important importance to our high school students. And we have phenomenal participation rate at Reading, and I think it's great. Every, just about every kid does something. And it keeps them busy, it keeps them engaged, it keeps them uh, having a, a, a passion. If, you know, if they're struggling in school, sometimes kids can't wait to get on the football field or can't wait to get on the ice. It's critically important to our kids' development. If we raise the price, we're all sitting here thinking, is that going to decrease participation? So I think that we're all on the same page. We're, we're really, it's not a huge increase, but at, at some point we're going to hit that line. And I, I don't want to be around when we do. So I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of, I, I, I'm against raising the student fee, but I do understand the budget constraints that we're under this year. And I think you're hearing that, Dr. Doherty, from the committee. No, so, I, all right. We're not, we're not, you know, we're not angry that you're proposing it. We're angry that we have to be discussing it. Yeah, okay. I understand. Uh, no, I'm not taking it that way. I understand. I knew that. It was a good comment, Mrs. Webb. I, I don't even know if it needs a further comment, but. I just want to say, not really angry. I don't want people to think it's angry. But I, I, I just think it's a difficult decision. I, I, I just want to say, while I think this is difficult, I won't say that at this juncture I feel like I'm strongly against this fee because I, I feel like we, you know, we have all of this to put together and evaluate. And you know, unless we're going to, in total, somehow get more than we're currently getting and have to cut less, then we are, you know, we're going to have to make those difficult decisions. And they're going to make some of us unhappy, and they're going to make people unhappy in different places. But I, you know, I need to sort of reserve my judgment on this, and, you know, it certainly is going to cost me personally some more money. Um, but I think maybe some of the offsets that Mr. Robinson alluded to would sort of, would help, would help that. It's a nice period of looking at it again. Dr. Doctor. I'm also wondering if any of you athletic organizations have support funds for those who can't afford the user fees. All of our we, students we do that. have that. So, but I, right. I do. <coughs> and none of them have. We have a financial assistance program for if you qualify with the federal guidelines that they reduce and Mr. Knight? So, yeah, just quick. So the, in the booklet, we have a lot more sports showing than up there. We have a much higher participation. Right now. This was just a subset of what has already taken place this year. This so is this year. Okay. This, this is, is, this is everything. Right. Okay. okay. So it was, it was just so that you could. It's difficult to compare the totals that, here. That's all right. So. Um, but you, you, yeah, so you're comparing apples to apples. Yeah. Two for a team in sports. Just what has happened already. Thanks for having um, so the athletic program budget, um, looking at the, uh, the four-year, five-year trend here, um, you can see where we, in this current fiscal year, we're budgeting a $330,000 offset, and next year we're, we're jumping to 380 that's a $50,000 increase. Um, I'm jumping around a little bit. We start at the top where <coughs> this is a non-union, uh, this is the, a portion of the uh, assistant principal of the high school salary. And then there is uh, building secretary or the, the program support secretary. The the jump here is a uh, step and cola increase, but it's also the incremental hours. We did change all of our uh, 
building secretaries and support secretaries from 35 and a half to 500 hours to um, base and a half. Um, and as you can see, almost everything else is, is, is level funded. And, and I did touch upon the, the transportation a little bit ago about how that, it, well, it appears that it's declining. We really haven't met that threshold, so I would say this year might be a little bit over funded, even given the, the five year, the, the rate increase for that busing for next year. Uh, Tom and I talked about this and we're pretty comfortable with the, the amount that we have in that Moving to extracurricular, um, really the budget drivers here were the stipend increases due to the collective bargaining uh, agreement. <coughs> and then we did, uh, we are proposing a, a, an increase to the drawing of the fee, and uh, we are increasing the proposal to increase the offset by $10,000. <coughs> Thank you. Um, and actually, it's a typo we need to take this, yeah. It's actually a proposed increase of $25, not $50. The current fee is $100. We're proposing to be $25. <coughs> um, and the current fee for tech crew is $50. And we're proposing to raise it to $75 um, with some adjustments to the family cap and the individual cap. And um, as we talked back in, uh, in early December about the, the fee structure, the band already pays $175. <coughs> this would help migrate um, the drama to a little closer to the, to the band user fee. So we're not proposing an increase to the band user fee. So, uh, yeah, uh, no, I was going to ask, uh, do you have that same sort of chart <coughs> as far as student participation goes? I do not. I didn't have that slide in there. I, I do have the data. It was part of the presentation back in December, so it would be fairly easy to okay. mail it to I guess I'm curious if. Uh, have we seen a similar decline, or have we seen increases in student participation? I think it's pretty pretty level. Yeah, it's, yeah, been, it's, it's been, been pretty level. Consistent. I remember looking at the data. It's been pretty level. It has been. Okay, yeah. great. Mr. Robinson. I, I know I've asked you this, and yeah. you told me. I just, the, when was the last time we <coughs> the band fee? Uh, the oh, that's right. <coughs> uh, the, so the, the drama fee was implemented back in, in fiscal 2012 and has not been increased since. And the ban fee was in, uh, implemented the year before and has not been increased. I, oh, Mrs. Borowski. The different band, is that okay? I, I was going to ask, yeah, and, and I'm sorry for the ignorant question, how many shows a, a year? Um, I know, isn't that crazy? <laughs> 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 okay. I, I, I was going to say two, but then I was thinking yeah, okay. the drama, four. 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 There's yeah, one per season, okay. but two in the winter. Okay. And, and students do not usually uh, participate in both winter shows. Okay. So some students one participate in three per year. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I should have known that. This is Thank you. Um, I have a question. It's actually about health services and athletics both. You level funded professional development in both last year's budget, <coughs> prior to FY15, there was no money in that line of it. So it's, it's really a tiny amount of money. We can make one side, we but actually I was curious it there, but we end up paying for it out of the district-wide budget. So it, it, we end up doing budget transfers to where we pay it from. So is it apples to apples, 12, 13, 14, 15? Mm -hmm. So that's, I guess that's my question. Why last year was there an increase in both, from basically zero to 1000 to $3,000? We, we always budget. A PD in the call center where the staff is, but um, the nurses, the PD that the nurses take ends up being paid out of the district wide. Okay. Yeah. Budget. So budgeted is here, here. expended is Gotcha. Thank you very much. Other questions from the committee? So, what would that professional development cover? Uh, what we've been doing is the MIA has some mandatory programs for all of our coaches. So, there's a um, there's a course that all coaches have to take. There's now actually three three courses in a first aid course that new coaches have to take. So that money would go towards that. There's also some uh, some other courses that a coach may may take. So it was basically um, around a hundred dollars per <coughs> sport if you if you do, uh, do up the math. Yeah. It, there's also a change in the law next year that all coaches have to be certified sure. CPR. Dr. Doxon. Um, my question was getting back to the drama. Um, 
and band I think is in the same actually they they all might be in the same boat and I think I brought this up before my question is about if there's all only one pie and there are lots of fundraisers from each group and the user fees are higher my concern is that the fundraising will go down like people won't be able to donate as much because they're paying higher user fees and I'm wondering whether there's when it was changed whether you noticed a correlation the directors noticed a correlation <coughs> with that like people donated fewer raffle baskets or went to fewer um, restaurants to raise the money or whether there's any data it might not be I don't know if there's real data for that but I do think, I th I'm pretty sure if drama had user fees before 2012. Because I remember in the old building, but yeah, I think it's, it's, been a, it's been a while. So I think, you know, maybe that first year. Um, and I know with the band user fee, the, it was being paid into the band parents. So it's, it's not quite a new fee for the kids, even though it's new through here. So it, it was already done. So I think that it's really hard to tell. And your sense from, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm just wondering your sense from working with families, would they feel this is a real hardship to raise? I know you have to work very hard to get people to actually I think it's logistically do it. It's always hard. So I think if, if we're raising the user fee, I think we, as the people running the programs, have to really look long and hard and, and figure out what we want or what we need and, and figure out, you know, we have to think of the families because ultimately, I mean, we're doing it for the kids, so we have to make sure that it's doable. And we do rely a lot on parents in our programs, the band and the drama and, and whatnot. And so we, d we have to look at that whole picture uh, and be thoughtful. So if we need to do this because of the budget, then there has to be an effect, you know. And so I think, you know, that I'm going to probably be talking a lot about what, what the reaction will be on from our programs. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Breskin. So I understand that um, the PD is budgeted to the costs that are but paid out of district. Are there any other line items that are like that? And the reason I'm asking is because then how can I look back and, s and know how much was actually spent for PD in these areas historically? Do you know what I mean? Because I, I, I use it in that way, and I want to okay. make sure I'm using the budget properly. I know for the coaches of education, that was put in, I believe, last year. Yeah. So that's why it might have been the year before, so it went from a zero. Yeah. To, I think three thousand yes. dollars. That's when it first yes. started. That's yeah, it first started there, was no, last year. there was no professional development for our coaches as a line item. Okay, so that wasn't. No, I mean, I, I remember last years. year when we were having the budget discussions last year. We that was the first time we had put it in for coaches. Okay, so I, my question is actually not so much about the PD or the cost. My my question is making sure that I'm using the budget book properly. So if it's budgeted here, it will be paid out of here. So I can look back historically. Which one are you looking at? The so I'm looking at yes, figure yes. 92. Which, which one? So I'm on figure 92. Okay, yes. Um, at the bottom, professional yeah. development. And what my question is, if you look at actually spend it in 12, 13, 14, zero or tiny amount of money, then it jumps up. And the exact same thing happens yeah, and, um, and under health uh, services professional. Health public. services professionals, we have been paying at other district wide. <coughs> okay. So it's budgeted. And that was just a past practice. You should be paying it out of this. So I, that's actually it just has practice that any PD, that, whether it's a nurse or a teacher or a para, has been going to that district wide. That's what the, the regular day. Is budgeted regular day. Get paid out of regular day. day. Okay. It okay. should get paid out of here. So going forward, it, it will. Be. And my next question, if I may. Of course. Are there any other places in the budget where that happens? No. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm, I'm glad that we'll practice it will be changing no. moving forward because I think it'll improve transparency. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, quick comment on the question, just to piggyback on what Dr. Dari said about the, how we just, and this is a 
there. We just added the professional development. I think coaches were paying for that out of their own pocket before we put it in the budget, which I'm glad we put it in there. They shouldn't have been doing that. Uh, but my question is, and we don't, we won't have it tonight. But I'd just be curious how much money we're sending to the MIAA. Oh, that's uh, when you say sending. Well, just you mean for dues? Everything. I mean, how much money are that are, are you know we're paying it for? Professional development. Uh, we're sending them a lot of money. It's, it's so I mean, off the top of my head, I, it, right? It, I know it, you, it yeah. would be dues, uh, coaches that take the MIA coaches education course. If a coach is taking a first aid course, it could be through the MIA, or it could be, it could be someplace else as well. And plus the that, that's certainly collecting the gate. Yeah. Just curious. Where is that in here right now? Is that in those fees? Those expenses. The dues. 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 The I can do it then. Yeah, we, we can. Yeah, we can try to come up with that. But we don't want to okay. pay that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pay in something to be eligible for tournaments. So you got to pay in something. <laughs> <laughs> this is what. Okay, so can I clarify then that dues and memberships is under the athletic budget, figure 92, is it $8,000 a year? Yes. Okay, so that would be under the athletic budget, figure 92, is it $8,000 a year? Yes. Okay, so that would be under the athletic budget, figure 92, is it $8,000 a year? Yes. Part of it is the MIAA, or? Right. It is the MIAA. It's also what league dues. Okay. I mean, so you have other dues, basically. Okay. Thank you. So I just wanted to build on uh, what you were saying about sort of the, the need and the want and how <coughs> to balance that. And I think that if you know we need we need this and we, we do end up going forward with these twenty five and thirty five dollar fee increases, then that means when you go back to your parent organizations that help to support these teams, that's where the in a, to a large degree, maybe not all, people will look at that as something that you want. Now, I know that people, parents might also look at that as we need this. But You're I talking think about the, the additional coaching, the donations? Additional coaching, or whether it's, it's mats or <coughs> uniforms or uh, jackets and hats. I mean, there's all kinds of things that, that go on through there. I guess the point is that, that I thought that you were trying to make that I liked was we have to go back and sort of be able to ratchet that back and reel it in. And so like the banquets, you know, banquets uh, that the booster parents often, that is all funded by either money or in-kind donations, you know, those kinds of things then might need to be ratcheted back a little. Those are wants versus you need to pay for that 95.2% of coaches if we want to run these teams. So I think it's a balance of, you know, the parent group that supports the team also working with the coach to say, you know, what is our budget going to be this year for fundraising because we have to recognize that it's gotten more difficult for families this year because they have to pay higher fees and a higher family cap. So, you know, I think that would have to be the dialogue, um, you know, in, in if we were to move forward in this direction. It might, not, it might need to be the dialogue anyway. I know personally that's a dialogue that I have with my groups. Um, I don't, I can't speak for anybody else in whether or not that that's common practice. Oops, can you talk about it, please? Thank you. Thank you, Chris. <coughs> yep, thank you, Mark. Okay. Um, moving on to the uh, network, networking and technology maintenance. Um, the budget drivers there are full adjustments for our technicians and our network manager. Um, these are non-union positions. They're uh, they're contacted positions, so they don't have column conceptions. Um, and we use the same uh, three percent that we used in the uh, admin and, and across the board. We use a three percent for for any non-union staff. Um, Dr. Dory and I have already talked a little bit about this, but we restructured some funds from the school transformation savings, uh, school transformation grant. Um, and added an additional technician and are charging uh, 0.25 as a data analyst to 
that. Um, this is some interesting data about um, just the number of devices, the sheer volume of devices that are in the district. Um, anecdotally, we've increased the number of devices since FY13, or excuse me, FY14 by over 200. Um, and this chart just tries to, it's the same um, set of data, it's just sliced differently. So it's by user group, um, you know, by school, and then you have by device on the right. So in total, we have uh, just over 2,500 devices in the district. Doctor, doctor. I didn't know it was a contest. Mr. Robinson. All right. <laughs> so my question was, um, when I, I keep, when I lie down at night, I keep thinking, okay, frontline, student-centered, um, and then I think um, technology, and I think those go hand in hand, um, but then I go to the place where what's a need and what's a want with technology, and I know we're talking about replenishing things that have broken and um, and things that are out of date, and I understand that. I guess one of my concerns is that we be really careful about what we want and what we need in the technology department because we work our technology specialists um, and the staff that we have very hard, and so, I wonder about balancing the devices that we have with the support systems that we have. And I, I don't want to replace things just for the sake of replacing them, but because we really need them. Would you like me to answer? Yes. So, um, the, we're not replacing at the rate we need to replace. So I, I think I'll start by that. We're not even on the five-year cycle we should be on probably should be less on five year cycle, which is why we asked to bump up the, an additional 50,000 to get us back to the 100,000 from the previous year. So we're not even replacing, I mean, we still have a significant number of machines that are XP, right? I don't know if we're still- Probably have about 70 machines that so are still Windows XP. XP. Which, you know, is not an effective machine anymore. Um, they don't even, they don't even service, they don't provide, they don't provide a <coughs> service anymore. Windows. So, um, what these additional 200 devices since last year really come from two major sources. One is um, PTOs giving us, uh, and mostly that's your uh, tablets, um, some laptops. The other is is the additional computers that we are receiving so that we could increase our bandwidth for Park. Not that it was just for Park, but you know, so that we have additional computers so we can do park consistently across grade levels. Um, that's what the extra 200 computers are from last year. That's really your two major sources. But that is why we feel the need for an additional technician, because right now, our instructional technology specialists who should be doing more work with teachers and students are not able to because they are focused on the, the more of the, the break fix or um, you know, preparing the laptops or the, or the tablets. So having an additional technician will, will take that more off of the, the technology specialists so that they can work more closely with the coaches, as Mr. Martin talked about the other day, uh, to have that true integration of math literacy technology, which really is what you want. Mr. Robinson. Dr. Doherty, partially answered my, I was gonna ask, does that include does that inventory include all the <coughs> devices that parents, PTOs? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Do we know what that is? Is that you don't um, have to I, get it tonight? I'm yeah, I, I don't know if we have an exact <coughs> number. We'd have to do some research. I mean, yeah. Certainly, the invoices would have been paid against the donation account, but we'd have to go back and look at the invoices to see how many they to see how many devices that five thousand actually purchased. And that that includes rep too, right? Yes. It also includes yeah. growth. Correct. This is well. So. And, and it then does not include the number of BYOD devices that are in here on a daily basis requiring no. support. No, no that's, but it does, re you're right, it does Requires require support. Yeah. Right, I, I guess I'm going along uh, this line because I, I know from, you know, a lot of high school students, there are times when 
and I don't know if I've heard it as much this year, but previous years, depending on some classrooms you're in, you can't always get your connectivity. I've been in the building a couple of times, one in, um, in the science or science department, and the times that I've been in here, there's always been, been you know, trouble connecting, or there's been, maybe it's your instructional, I don't know, I don't know which special it is, somebody is always running in and out, it seems, trying to fix a problem. So I think if, you know, we're kidding ourselves if we don't think we need to put the money here, because if, you know, we're, we've got the instructional technology available, we have teachers that are, know how to use it and are excited, we have students that want to leverage it, and if we can't make it work, then we're wasting all of that. So, you know, I really feel like for, you know, this is certainly an important piece of what we need to do to make sure students and teachers are Could I have, uh, sorry, very quick comment. When, uh, when students and group, parent groups and rep, and they're so generous and they work so hard and they give us, the number of donations we accept every year is just amazing. Uh, do we feel, and, and this question might be, well, I guess it's for Dr. Doherty or our technology specialist, um, thank you for being here. Um, do we have control over the types of equipment that are being purchased? Yes. yes. Okay. So. If, if a parent comes in and says, oh, well, we're going to buy 10 iPad Airs, we have the ability to go back and say, hey, you know, the iPad 4 is just as good and it's $200 cheaper and that's where we'd rather spend the money because that's where the district has standardized. Yes. We have that ability. Yeah. Yes. Usually when the money comes before the school committee, it's, it's generally written to support technology purchases okay. to give us the flexibility. It gives the finding we do the purchasing. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very and, much. And with REF, the same, the, pretty much the same thing. We approve all the REF grants before they go to rep. Right. Perfect. Thank you very much. Mr. Robinson. In the uh, just to Dr. Doxter's point earlier, uh, and maybe was thinking, you know, we do get this money from REF and the PTOs. Do we ever think about deploying that to personnel as opposed to going out <coughs> and buying more products? You don't want to use donations to fund personnel because it's not sustainable. And rough because it's against yeah. their, our bylaws. Yeah. Yeah. Because it may be here one year and then next year it's not here, and then what do you do? <coughs> and we're always replenishing our technology cycle, so. Mr. Knight? Does every classroom have a smart board, John? At the elementary level and at the high school level, yes. At the middle school level, not necessarily, but they have other devices. And, and honestly, I'm not sure that smart boards are necessarily the way to go in the future, so when a smart board goes, we've been having serious conversations. There are other tools out there that are less expensive and more effective. Right. Yeah. Right. Today, yes. yes. Right. Yeah, absolutely. But, but I've heard that. Yeah. And that's a really interesting point, and, and, and thankfully it sounds like we are looking towards yes. that, that we're, we're thinking about yes. what's the best use of our funds, so that's fantastic. Mr. Rob? I knew that was going to be your answer. Uh, I want to Did think about, no, no. <laughs> as I was asking the question, it, you know, that makes perfect sense, but I guess I think that's something we should <coughs> to think about, whether we call it a consulting services line or something, where we start putting some of that money into an account so that we can pay for services as opposed to sure. just continue sure. to buy it. It's something we can talk about later. But. Good point. Thank you. Um, so, in terms of the actual detail of the budget, the networking and technology budget, uh, as you can see, we, um, we really level funded it this year, with the exception of um, the the cola increase and um, the the jump that you're seeing in the, the technician line is the the net impact of that 1.0 uh, restructuring of, to add a technician and uh, the offset the, the offset that we're taking to the transformation grant for the data. Um, the next call center that we want to talk about is uh, school building maintenance. Um, this call center, the major functions here are custodial services, the heating of the buildings, our utility services, um, maintenance and building security, and then any extraordinary maintenance that wouldn't be covered under capital. 
as we've been trying to do with all of our presentations, to align the, the goals of, of the department with, uh, with our uh, directives. Um, in this one, you can see really the, the safety and security is one of the goal alignments, and then um, space needs is another goal alignment. So the real drivers in this cost center are our contractual step and uh, uh, increases for our, our custodial and maintenance staff that are in a bargaining unit. Um, the maintenance, the HVAC maintenance services that we contract out, we'd really like to potentially bring this in-house, but we need to do some data analysis to see if it would be cost effective. I know a few years ago, the committee supported bringing an electrician in-house, and that really has saved us a lot of money. So this is another area that we'd like to do a little bit of research on and, and see if there's evidence to support uh, not outsourcing it for you in town. Um, as we've talked a little bit this season about uh, natural gas, we all know that we had a very advantageous uh, natural gas contract that is due to expire June 30th, 2015. We currently pay $7.30 a decatherm. And um, when we first reached out, we used Tradition Energy as our, our consultant. Um, this is something that we uh, can use a consultant for, and a lot of districts do. Um, today, they actually hosted a forum on pricing and, and the market, and it was wonderful information because the uh, price that he gave us to use in the budget is a little bit higher than what the market is right now. So we're very hopeful that sometime in the next few weeks we'll be able to execute a contract and we'll actually have this to lock down. But natural gas is uh, its not at an all-time low because it's not as low as what we're at right now, but uh, it, is, it is driving the market and it's helping drive down the, uh, the cost of oil and uh, electricity as well. That's what we learned today. Uh, some of the decreases here are our electricity consumption, and we also have a, you know, the benefit of RMLD. Uh, one of the budget drivers that was in the <coughs> budget was a significant rate increase that, that really hasn't materialized. And um, so the rate proposal is that, uh, I believe it's Colleen, right, from RMLD? Colleen, 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 yeah, yep. Colleen provided to, um, to the town manager and myself um, is what the basis of the <coughs> rates that we use for next year. For both uh, natural gas, electricity, and sewer, we used a five-year <coughs> trend of our average, average of five years consumption for each of those um, those commodities, and applied the rate. Because, you know, we anticipated rate to get our budget. And these were part of the accommodated costs that were provided to the town manager. I just want to add one thing. Um, you may, may be missing earlier, but any utility costs associated with our modular classrooms are not in this budget. So that's something to keep in mind if modular classrooms are approved, that we will need to factor in utility costs. Um, I know Martha is working on those numbers, and hopefully we will have something concrete or close to concrete um, <laughs> next week. Thank you. Um, and then the other thing that uh, is new, to, the other thing that is new um, this year is we did increase the offset <coughs> from the extended day revolving fund. and. Um, as you may be aware, Extended Day is a wonderful program. It's a before and after school uh, care program that's run in all five of our elementary schools. Um, we previously have not uh, charged an offset for space usage, and that's what this is for. Um, and so this is a new offset this year. Um, question on that? Sure. sure. So, um, <coughs> interesting on that, because I think, um, yeah, so I know when I was in Delta, Are they did deriving enough revenue to to uh, yes. about the fifty thousand dollars a year? The program had, uh, the program has grown significantly since uh, the director came on board, and um, there it, it, it can support it. Yes. And the other key thing too is that they and this is extended day, not a delta. Okay, but is, fund. Is it, oh, but it's the same. Same, same, same it comes same under the same mass umbrella. general law for community yeah. uh, activity, but this is a separate revolving fund. But if, if we weren't doing that, and we were, let's say, letting another facility, another organization use it, like the YMCA, the Recreation Department, they'd be paying it too. Mm -hmm. So they would be. Yeah. This was using uh, the the fifty thousand was calculated <coughs> for the net hours that they're using it, both before and after school, and uh, applying our nonprofit rental fee, which is very nominal. This is Perry. 
So do you expect that to be every year then? Uh, we believe so, yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So it's sustainable? Yes. Yes. Okay. Isn't that? But Sorry. <coughs> we would expect it to be every year, except that if we have to go back to half-day kindergarten, right, wouldn't that affect the amount that we would be taking in for extended day? Because that would impact how many children signed yes. up for it. So we could see a deficit. It potentially could, yeah. And we, we did talk about that last time. We did talk about that last time. Yes. Mr. Robinson, <coughs> can you? Can you talk about the, I mean, you know how concerned about the 37% increase in debt to debt concern? Yes, debt to debt concern. So, so. Um, can you talk about the process that we're going to use? To, I mean, is, is that coming from our existing bed? I don't, I don't understand so all the bed. How sure. many, what's the level? Of, I mean, if we were buying oil, there's 10,000 oil guys out there. We could go, yeah. it's not the same with that. Yeah. No, it's not. Tradition Energy is the consultant that we use, um, and even today there were, I, I want to say there were probably four or five school districts below that were sitting at our table at lunch today, uh, business managers from other school districts and facilities as well. Um, so Tradition Energy is, is really a, a, a respected, well-known player that's who we've used for years now to go out and help contract our natural gas. So <coughs> they, they do market analysis and, and forecasts and everything else. So they're the ones who back in October advised us to wait. They said the market's gonna change. If you want if you absolutely feel like you have to buy today, you're gonna you're gonna regret it. So we'll wait. And and it, you know, obviously it's always a risk, but um, at this point it's uh, it's almost sixteen percent less per decatherm right now than what I used in the budget. So so if we are able to lock in a contract in the next couple of weeks we'll have more certainty of what our, our natural gas costs would be. Assuming consumption doesn't change, because you know, obviously a mild winter versus a, an extreme winter could be more difficult. Does is, that answer your question? Yeah, Sorry. no. Uh, is there, the, under the contract that expires in June, is there any uh, way to negotiate an, an extension of that? No. Yeah. Uh, it's a commodity contract, so I, the pricing that he's giving to us right now are one, two, and three year contracts that we'll be able to, so a one year contract is a little bit more, so a little more, a little less, I'm trying to think which way the tier structure went. Um, it's less, less, because you have yeah. more certainty, yeah. closer. So he's, so he's negotiating for us to get, because mm -hmm. I mean, in most businesses, if he came in with a 37% increase, you'd probably get a bullet. But it's based on the market. Right now, crude oil, the, the price of a barrel of crude oil is, is about $45. I think so when we came up with this number was in November when we were developing the budgets. And that was the number we were getting. But we were also told to wait because the market yeah. could go down. So we went conservative and went with what we thought would be the high water mark. Yeah. This is what. So I, I was sort of under the impression that the contract we're at at the 7.3 um, is was <coughs> was really very good, and that we were probably in a little bit better position than some of our peer communities. But um, so and, and I, so I don't know if that's still true today. But I guess we are where we are, and we've enjoyed that for the last how many years. So you're saying that this this ten dollars per decatherm was from a little while ago, mm -hmm. and now, so you expect that that is currently 16% better than that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, right, I just to so what's sure. the make of the cost now? The budget? I believe the budget either is 9 or 10. I'd have to go back and look at so my, 10 my I think it's 10. I think it's 10. It's what you budget yeah. for. It's not going to be 7.3. No. But it'll be 16% less than the yes. 10 you're saying right now. Yeah, right. Sort of. okay. It's what we hope for, yes. And um, so <coughs> what was the time time frame on that in terms of? Uh, We're hoping a little next week. Next week. But there's a, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. One is, again, modulars. Utility costs are not built into this budget. Good thing this was very conservative. Um, <laughs> the, other, the other thing is that we had some fluctuations at a couple of our schools that indicate to us that we may have some increases that we weren't accounted for. Uh-oh, who's not controlling the premise then? So, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs>
turn the heat off, Mr. Walker. No, no, this isn't. No, this isn't. This isn't heating control. This is something else. So maintenance. No, I think we can move on. Okay. So, so maintenance staff has remained pretty consistent year over year. We the school committee did approve a, a new position uh, earlier this year, and that's where you're seeing the, um, the 0.4 increase. That is our, our part-time facilities rental coordinator, who um, is really, um, has hit the ground running and has been a, a, real, a real asset. So we're thankful for that position. Um, when you look at the, you know, again, this is the same data, just sliced a little bit differently. The professional salary savings, that is, um, uh, salary savings from turnover. Um, the other salary lines, that is where the, the increased budget offset is captured, so that's why it looks like it's going down um, when it, in actuality it's, it's, a, it's an offset, an increased offset. <coughs> um, again, slicing the data a little bit differently. And it looks like an astronomical percentage change on the school security, and it's really just uh, to buy additional things to help support the Alice protocol that we've implemented. Um, this year, I don't know if there's one on the door or not, but this year we bought magnet strips for all the doors of different schools and, and supplies for the, the uh, backpacks and things like that. So this is just uh, to keep up with, with uh, that program. Um, on the heating of the buildings, we talked a little bit about this. So this is, um, again, it's looking at using that conservative number for the decatherms for our gas. Um, we spoke a little bit about utility services, that's electricity. And as you can see, um, we did budget significantly higher this year. Uh, and, and part of that was the, an assumed increase in the IMLB rate, which didn't materialize. So it looks like we're decreasing, but we're, we're pretty consistent with the past years in terms of consumption and pricing. Um, looking at our actual buildings and the square footage, um, this is just a different way to look at the data. The size and the age of our buildings are, are kind of apparent. And, and uh, I'm going to steal Dr. Dory's from earlier this evening because yeah. he talked about Coolidge, which is obviously a building he's very familiar with, and it's one of our more expensive buildings to operate. Um, and when they did the renovation back, down, back in 2001, um, the old section, they didn't update the heating system in the old section, so there, there's, a, there's different heating sources for the building. One is- um, One is for hot water, water and one is- I mean, uh, I didn't, I'm sorry. Okay. So um, again, this is just it's, uh, another way to look at the data. Perfect, yeah, Questions before we move on to town? Yeah, this is what. So, um, but then the high school, services working. It's um, probably, uh, when, like when you look at the total cost per square foot, that accounts yeah. for how big the sure. space is, but yeah. okay, it's probably like the hours of operation of this building that's given the robotics building now that was drawn up upstairs, right? So the lights are wrong. Yeah, cool, um, just feels like that. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Continue. So um, moving on to town, uh, town building maintenance, as you know, um, our, uh, director and uh, the supervisor custodians support the southern town buildings as well. Um, we have three dedicated uh, maintenance staff that also uh, help out on the town side. Uh, we have three custodial staff, staff um, and we outsource cleaning for the town hall and the police station. Is that just the two? <coughs> the police, I costs in here were accommodated costs. Um, the, you'll see another slide in a minute. The heating, um, this year, the, I should say last year, the $146,000 last year, 
It was, uh, for starters, it was a very difficult winter. It was a very cold winter. We had a lot of snow last year. And as you know, we have a very large EPW garage that the doors remain open and closed, and that's a, a very difficult um, building to um, module, uh, maintain the heat and the heat to, uh, So that, we did see a, a spike in consumption with the garage last year, and we are seeing some, some trending that it's, it's looking like it's uh, up a little bit this year as well. So we are gonna try and look to see if there are any things that we can do to help mediate that. Um, but this, uh, the increase in heat, it, it's not all a function of the rate for natural gas. Some of it is, is correcting the budget. Mr. Robinson. If I may have read it in here, the extraordinary maintenance, what, what is that? Um, that's, I'm going to defer to you on that one. So extraordinary maintenance is basically, you know, you have your regular operational maintenance, your preventative maintenance, the things that you can plan for or that are expected in nature. So something has reached the end of its useful life, it wouldn't reach the threshold of being on the capital plan, but it's something that you replace filters and you replace certain things. Um, extraordinary is maybe something you hadn't planned for, maybe a door at the DPW has malfunctioned. The and lift. So the lift, the there was DPW a- The DPW had to replace the lift. So things like that that are more than just touching paint up. Right, more than your regular preventative or reactive maintenance. There'd be something that would reach the magnitude that fiscally and operationally, um, but still below the threshold of being planned on a capital plan. So I think we've talked about this before, when we go to for a, a reserve of income transfer of something extraordinary, uh, that's what that fund is for. Uh, I, I would think that would be something major, like if a boiler, right? Yeah, yeah. I think this is less than a boiler we're talking about. Yeah. <coughs> this is like a good example is the one that Kelly gave. We replaced the, one of the lifts of the DPW garage. It doesn't raise rise to the threshold of being capital. It's something that you would accommodate out of your operating budget. Certainly, if we were at a, at a situation where we didn't think we had enough in the operating budget, we could go back and say this is what's happened. Um, we haven't been faced with that situation. We've been able to work in things like that into the budget. So we do day to day. Mrs. Webb. So just along those lines. So what were there was there was also a significant amount last year in, in the school. So what kinds of issues did we see that end up falling into that versus sort of like a, a transfer of income transfer? I'm just I just was looking back at the numbers since Ms. Robinson brought it up. I'm just last year, and I'm, I'm, my memory and trying to be, there was something at the police station that we went to the FinCom for a transfer on. Yeah, it was, no, it was a fire. Was it the floor in the fire station? Floor in the fire station, maybe? But there was something at the police station, too, I thought. Right, that's it. It's interesting because the budgeted numbers for FY15 for the schools was much higher, but the budgeted number for the town <coughs> was much uh, lower last year. I don't know. That must have been something about how the process was. Mr. Robinson. So I guess what you were looking at, I just, I'm looking at, you know, look at 2012. I mean, that's not a small number. Right. That's not a uh, slush fund that you go to, you know, buy new parts out of. That's that's a lot of money. Uh, you yeah, know, I, I'm I, not I guess sure what, what anomaly happened or what got repaired in 2012. I, that, that's just like, I, yeah, I can find that out. No, no. I, I, but I guess I I I I understand, except the reason why we have it, but. You know, why are we increasing it 22.9 percent? Um, I would say that it's probably just a function of the age of the buildings. And you, when you look at uh, where the money gets spread around, it, it's a big percent increase, but dollar wise, it's, it's not. Uh, I know it, but, but when we're trying to, you know, when we're talking about a use of a fifty thousand dollar offset, all of those dollar but amounts. This is not our budget. No, this, this is, is the isn't. Town. This is the town budget. Don't forget. Oh, we, but Same we, pot of money. It's, 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 no, it's, no, it's, it's not. not. No, it's not when it comes to the offset. So don't don't confuse the offset. Well, then use another thing. We we're, we're, uh, forget about the offset. Something else that we're looking to 
put money in. No, the but funding the funding from the town budget, you can't take something from here to fund the schools. Well, it's a right. separate it's a separate allocation. This is not part of our forty one million dollar budget. Right. This is but if you, completely but, separate. But to Chuck's line of questioning, if you go back then and look at figure ninety eight, which is the school building maintenance budget function, the numbers under that extraordinary maintenance line have sort of the same trend. They're a little bit different value, but they have sort of the same trend and um, you know they're very high in 2012 and then they're much lower in 13 and 14 the budgeted amount for 15 is, is up and then the budget amount for 16 that we're looking at right now is up so I think that's where mr. Robinson's question about you know we're, we're looking at trying to understand and you know where 50,000 of offset and what we can do in our budget and so I think just trying to understand is that hundred thousand budgeted there for extraordinary maintenance really the right number or should we be you know is it is it the kind of thing that maybe it should be 50,000 and then other things that may happen would be something that we would go to FinCom when they happen for a transfer so I, I can provide I can get more detail on what they can say Mr. Knight and then the question I would have is did we expend all of the funding allocated for extraordinary payments last year too is that that, that spent did we actually spend a hundred thousand hundred thousand dollars to change yeah, that's still a I know you won't have the answer to that but that'd be something I'd be curious yeah. well, so it is, well we're in this year, year not budget so I don't know what we spent well, I mean, this year so anyway so, so that <coughs> is what we spent last year yeah, totally. yeah. okay so. and that is what we spent so those are the those are the actuals. This is the budget for this year. Okay, so I'm curious, like, what did we budget then, I guess would be the question, and what did we spend? I think it would be worth it for us to just look at it. The, the two sets of numbers have the same trend, whether you look at the school building maintenance Some of it isn't, now. isn't necessarily, it's, it's unplanned things, like the, the $10,000 expense of the DPW garage. Right. So you have to have a certain percentage of your budget set aside to cover the fact that the a, a door might break somewhere, or, um, I understand or, or you that. might want to put the, 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 the awnings in at the senior center to try and save money on, all that, on, on heating. So it, it's things like that that end up in the extraordinary maintenance line. I, I understand that. I just think that you know, we need to just look at that because the budget for FY15 is almost double the FY14, and there must have been some reason for, for making that decision and putting that number there. And now for FY16, we're basically carrying that same number. And the same thing on the town town maintenance. So I just think we should, you know, look at that, make sure that that. We'll, we'll be more than happy to provide to you how we came up with that. Yeah. And, and then, well, we'll be yes. Yeah. We can do that. Too. Um. So this is uh, again just looking at by town building their total maintenance budget, so it's a slice of a different way. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the DPW has, um, last year that was really a function of, of their heating expense. Um, <coughs> um, and then here's just a, a snapshot of the square footage that we're managing on the, the town side. So uh, in total, the seven buildings combined 437,000 square feet. Um, as you can see, some of the nature, some of the buildings um, are more expensive to operate than others. Uh, I should note that we do have a budget in there for library for this year because we are responsible for the utilities and, and, and other buildings for the rented space right now. We have turned over the responsibility for the utilities at the our, our actual library to the uh, contractor. It's an interesting way to look at it when you think about Reading High School being 300,000 square feet. It's more than twice the size of all of the town buildings. Just an observation. I'm not asking you to change that. Is that questions from the committee? Questions from the audience who've been very patient this evening. Wow. Simon, thank you very much. Can I just make one comment? Just, um, just to kind of look, look forward. So, um, no meeting on Monday. 
because um, of the, the holiday. Um, next Thursday will be the public hearing, which will start at 7 o'clock. Um, right, it's posted for 7, right? Yep, so it's 7 o'clock. And then after that, we will start uh, reviewing the questions with you. Martha has been working on them. Um, we will try to get those out to you prior to Thursday. Um, so you have the answers ahead of time. We will not, unless the committee wants to, we will not sit here and read the answers of the questions back to you. Um, we will go over some key questions that, that we feel uh, tie into some of the discussions that we've been having, but we will provide answers to all the questions for you. Um, and then next, the following, a week from Monday the, uh, is when the school committee is scheduled to vote on the budget. Um, Remember, we need to now by the new charter, uh, we need to submit a budget to the town manager by February 1st. What that means is we need time to get that information together so we can't just approve it on February 1st. We need some lead time because now we have to actually provide a budget to the town manager by that date. Um, so the 26th really would be a logical time for, to, take a, to take a vote. Um, and one other date, just so the committee is aware and the community is aware, is on the 21st okay. next week is the financial forum. So that's at 7.30 at the Senior Center. And we will uh, uh, be, <coughs> my understanding, we'll be discussing two items. One is the budget, the FY16 budget. Uh, selectmen are doing the same parallel process that you're doing right now. And also we'll be talking about the modules. Questions? Thank you, Dr. Starry. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Robinson, I believe we have minutes, and then we can. Uh, Chairman, uh, move to approve the uh, January 8, 2015 school committee minutes. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Dr. Doxson. I Doxer. just have a comment. I just wanted to thank Mrs. Engelson because with the discussions that go on with the questions, it's very challenging to follow, and I thought the minutes were very inclusive and helpful as a reminder of what we had discussed, and so thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 6-0. Uh, motion to adjourn. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Great. All those in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you. Mm -hmm.